All right, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a little monster doll and I have never done anything like this before so bear with me as I make it up as I go. So I started out drawing a very very simple little template on a piece of paper. He is just going to be a two-legged, no arms, big old grin with one eye monster and he's got some horns as well. So let's get started. First thing I did was I grabbed some old wire hangers and I cut them up to create an armature. Now I did change my plan through this. I originally thought that I would have him standing and poseable and then I decided that might be a little too advanced for me right now so I decided to make him a little simpler. So to make the horns I measured out approximately the same length and then I bent them in kind of weird shapes and angles. I wanted them to look completely different from each other and trust me they did. So for the horns I just rolled out some polymer clay and I pressed it onto the wire and just started shaping it down the wire so it starts out thicker and ends thinner. As I go I am sort of shaping it into a rough squared shape. I want it somewhat rounded but not round. Now I'm using a, just a basic tool to sort of smooth things over and then I'm adding indents into the horns kind of give that ridged look and also create some natural like dense like you know this monster isn't a youngin he's been through some stuff he's got some battle scars that kind of look for the feet I had bent the wire at a 90 degree angle and then I just did the same thing I pressed a ball of clay on and then shaped it into sort of a sock So I'm giving it three toes. I'm also carving in long pointy toenails and unfortunately I decided to hold the horn directly above where I was carving so you can't really see much there, sorry. Now I'm just giving it texture and I'm really just using some leftover wire that I had sitting there because it just worked. So I'm just pressing it in and dragging it and trying to give it more of a textured feel. And then finally the mouth. So I shaped it into kind of a mouth shape if you will, cut out the center so that I could start sculpting pieces to go inside of it. I'm sculpting kind of a tongue shape and then I added extra balls to kind of thicken it up there. And then I added fangs to the top of the mouth. And my first set of fangs actually were kind of thin and sharp and it just looked too serious for the look I was going for. So I came back with thicker ones and much duller. And so they're kind of like comically big, which just sort of love. Now that the base is done, I am actually flattening out edges behind it and that is so I can attach it to the doll later. It does not have to be pretty because it will not show. Okay, and now I bake that and they're all done. So let's skip ahead to painting. So I decided that the limbs were going to be hot pink. So the first thing I do is slap on a few coats of hot pink to give it a nice solid color base. And I do this for both the feet and the horns. And I think these took maybe three coats to get the solid color down. Once I was done, I added some black to water and then I just basically painted over everything and wiped away when it got too thick in areas but I really just wanted to give it a very dirty wash to highlight some of the shadows and the indents and the textures that I've added and really just make everything look very old and lived with. So for the mouth I've 
painted the tongue red and then I'm painting everything else black and again I took a couple of coats to get a, a good solid color down for everything so I won't make you watch all of that and finally I'm painting the fangs pink to match the limbs And the last detail is actually adding some red splotches to the mouth. I want to make it look like there's some blood on the fangs, but nothing too morbid, just, just enough morbid really. Now my final step for the mouth, which I didn't show, was I actually added UV resin to the inside of the mouth and to the blood splotches. I just wanted to get like a, a little extra glossy in those areas, but I did spray coat varnish all of the clay pieces before attaching to the body. So next up, building the body. I have these old baby pants. They're very unique. Just kidding. Anyway, they're old and used. They've got some stains. I couldn't donate them. So I stuck, tapped them in my fabric pile and the inside of it, and I really like the blue color, but the inside of it is kind of fuzzy, but like that used fuzzy, which just felt perfect for this project. So I turned it inside out and I'm setting my template up on there so that I can cut enough fabric for it. And then I set the template down, make sure there's enough room around for the whole thing and then figure out where I'm placing it. And then I outlined my template on the back of the pants. So the back of the fabric that I don't want showing. And I left about a centimeter or so edge all around it so that there's room for me to sew it. And here is what's left. Two little pieces. Okay, so you can see I have now sketched out where the mouth is going to go. And I have the two pieces on top of each other with what's going to be on the outside facing each other. And I've made markings on here for the mouth and for where the horns are going to go and also where the feet are going to go. And that is so I don't sew those parts together. I've also cut out the mouth area and you can see I've cut inside of where the actual mouth will be. It's always easier to cut more later. So cut smaller now. And you also want it to be a really tight fit. So it makes more sense to go smaller anyway. Last thing is I'm putting this little random piece from a, inside of a paint container here to show where the eye is going to go and that is so I can cut out areas that I want to basically restitch up but I want to make sure I don't touch where the eye is going to go so I'm just using that to block myself and then I did the same for the back side there's some random spots and just cut. So here are all of my cut areas together and now I'm going to sew them back up using embroidery thread. And I decided on embroidery thread because it's a lot thicker than like sewing thread and I really want this to look like a kid basically sewed this up, so it's really messy, it's really inconsistent, really thick and kind of obnoxious looking. And I'm just sewing giant X stitches. Now, once that's done, I'm adding some black paint to water again. And I'm going to paint over the stitches and I want them to kind of look really old, like this monster has seen some things, you know? kind of dripping out of the stitches, really dirtying up the fabric without going kind of overboard. And then after that's dry, I'm going to just do a basic stitch around the whole edge, except for the areas where the feet and the horns will attach. And for now, I'm actually just not gonna do the whole feet area I don't have anywhere for me to put my sewing machine right now and so I only did hand stitching for this. Next time I do this I definitely want to be able to use my machine to do this a lot tighter. 
Now before I turn it inside out, I'm sticking the template back in so that I can super glue over the stitched areas. So it's just so they don't like split a seam or anything. Because like I said, these were pretty messy childlike stitches on purpose, but I just don't want them to ruin it. So I'm just spreading some super glue over all those areas. And then when that's dry, we will move on. Okay, so carefully turn it inside out, or right side out, I guess I should say. And now I'm going to start working on the eye area. So I found this baby washcloth in my fabric stash. That was also kind of stained up, and it was this pretty pink color. I'm using a cabochon for my eye, and this is just one I had sitting on my desk, so it's not actually a finished eyeball, obviously. But I used it to measure on the washcloth just so I could get the size right. And I left about a centimeter of room all around it, and I just cut out a circle. And then I cut out a slit in the middle, and that's basically where the eye is going to be peeking out from. And then I lit a candle, a little tea light, and I started burning the edges because I really want this to look roughed up and dirty. And yes, it got fire a couple times, but that's okay. Basically, every time I pull it off the screen, it's because it caught on fire. <laughs> But I'm just trying to rough up the edges and make it really dirty and burnt looking. And that's basically how it's going to look. Now it's time to assemble. Okay, so here is my finished eye. And I don't have a video of me making it because I made a ton of them and I didn't know which one I was going to use. So the one I ended up doing, I did paint an eye on paper and I chose hot pink and dark blue with gold specks. Then I sealed it, attached it to the cabochon, and sealed the back using UV resin. And I have marked on the doll now where exactly that's gonna go, just so I don't, you know, mess it up in the 12th hour. And I'm just using E6000 glue to attach it directly there, and then I'll attach the fabric over it. And this glue does dry pretty fast, like within two minutes. It does take a few hours to really cure solidly, but you can move on after like five or 10 minutes. So I've glued it down to the fabric. Once that's pretty set in place, then I put glue on the side of the actual eyeball and then I slip the fabric over it. Yes, it is wonky. That is on purpose. This guy is crazy. All right, now that that's done, I decided I wanted to put more of those crazy X stitches all around the pink fabric. Had I thought of this beforehand, I would have done it before stitching the fabrics together, but I didn't, so I had to do it with some difficulty. Zero to ten would not recommend, but got it done, and I only stabbed myself like ten times, so I'm good. Now, the last step I want to do for the eye is actually burn it. I decided it didn't look worn enough, so I took some more flames and I just uh, burnt out some of the stitches, gave it some more burn marks, and now it's time to attach the mouth. So I'm turning this inside out again so that I can attach it easier. And what I'm going to do is E6000 along that lip that I created on the mouth, and I'm sticking it into the hole, which by the way I did test out previously to make sure that the hole I had cut was working. Now it's just a matter of quickly turning it right side out and then adjusting the mouth to where it needs to go and then pressing the fabric into place along the glue and within a few minutes that'll be perfect. So finally we are to the point where we can start filling him and most of this filler is actually coming from an old pillow but I'm also adding some of the scraps. I'm like thread and like literally from the pants just shoving all those scraps in there because it's all going to feel the same and they work as great filler now when the head's about finished 
being filled, I am going to stitch along where the orange lines are. Where the pink circles are, I want to leave open so that I can attach the legs in there. There's basically three sections that I need to finish stitching along, and I'm just doing a ladder stitch to close up these areas so they're invisible. And now we're down to the last leg. Now I finish filling him a little bit, and I'm just using some wire that was sitting here to help stuff it in as tight as I can. And then it's time for the final assembly. So we just add some glue to the edge of everything, stick them in the holes and make sure that the fabric closes around it. And then we're done. Time for the final reveal. Introducing Coda. My daughter named him. I don't know what he means, but his name is Coda now. And he is the funkiest thing I've ever made. And I love him to death. He's my new best friend. And I cannot wait to make more of these because he needs a hundred friends. And I am sure every single one's going to get better because <laughs> I learned so much in this process and I would do so many things differently. So I'm excited to experiment with some other ways of doing things and sharing that as I go with you guys. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with everything I'm up to. Let me know in the comments if you like my monster, what you would do differently, and what you want to see me do next. Thank you guys again. See you later. Bye!